Hi there guys, we, today we're going to be talking about one point perspective and I'm going to be shifting between uh, my stationary points and my vanishing point. At this very moment you'll see that your stationary point is at the top and you've got your vanishing point at the bottom which is quite awkward. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly take myself to the next sheet which is going to be swapping those two around for me. I'm going to be simply putting the stationary point at the bottom and putting the vanishing point at the top. Alright, so also what we want to see is the fact that we have an auxiliary view which is given as a top view and we've been given a portion of the answer already. Okay, now to find this height you would have had an auxiliary front view or left side view or right side view to be able to project from and uh, collect this information. Okay, so just for this information over here, you know that this is going to be your ground line down the bottom here in which your actual shape is going to be standing and then you'll have a picture plane. One thing that I'd like to quickly highlight is the fact that my vanishing point is directly above my stationary point. So I'm going to be drawing a nice vertical line to be able to connect my vanishing point. But the question remains is where and how far do I think this point will be from this point? Well, it will definitely have to be along the horizon line. So I'm going to go draw the horizon line in, so I'd expect you to do exactly the same, and that I'm going to be labeling my horizon line. There it is. Okay, HL stands for horizon line. So take note that I have a vanishing point directly above my stationary point on the horizon line. Okay, that'll always happen for one point perspective. Right, so if I now sh shift between the two drawings, this one here, I will recognize that I've got my vanishing point down below and my stationary point at the top. Now, the stationary point is the actual person. The actual person that is going to be standing at that point stationary looking at this building. So remember, this is the top view that I'm seeing over here. If I'm the person standing here watching this building or box shape that I have over here, I'll be able to see anything from this side all the way across to this side. Anything behind these two points, such as this point here or these sides, will then clearly be hidden detail. Okay, so let's apply the same functionality as I did uh, in the previous drawing. I know that I have the horizon line that actually shoots right through this line over here. Right, and I also would like to go ahead and label it. There we go. Okay, so note that my horizon line on this uh, drawing over here is a lot lower than the one in this drawing. There it is there. Okay, because my vanishing point falls on my horizon line. In this drawing over here, my vanishing point falls on my horizon line, so nothing changes. Okay, so let's see what we will end up with. I'm going to go with a normal standing and we're going to simply go ahead with constructing this image. I know that my auxiliary top view would need to have all the points except the ones touching the picture plane connected to my stationary point. So I go ahead and I connect this one over here to my stationary point, which is me, remember, it's my line of sight, and I'll be able to connect this point here as well. Right, so typically you'll see that these two points are touching the picture plane, and I have not connected these to the stationary point because they are touching the picture plane. These two points that are touching the picture plane gave me this bit of information, this length that I'm working with, or if you would like, the width of this box down below. All right, so anything that touches the picture plane, such as these two points, would have to be dropped straight down with vertical lines. Okay, that means I have taken these points, connected them to my stationary point for a reason, to find exactly where they touch the actual picture plane. So where they touch the picture plane, I'm just going to make uh, little subtle marks over there and I'm going to be drawing vertical lines in construction straight down. Okay, now for a moment I'd like to just go ahead and snap across to the next drawing. 
The next drawing, you'll note that I've got the stationary point over here and my vanishing point over here. Now remember, we said that we're going to be taking everything from our auxiliary top view, these two points that are not touching the picture plane, and I'm going to be connecting them to my stationary point. That is me. See, the same concepts apply. Let's skip to the next one. My stationary point connected to the auxiliary top view. Right, let's go back to the next one. So therefore, from the stationary point, I have to connect all the points that do not touch the... Um, there we go. From Yeah. Over there, we have to force them to touch the picture plane. There. To there. Okay, and I'm going to quickly go a little make little subtle marks over there so that I know exactly which points to use to simply drop straight down. Now you can drop down these points as far as you really like because we're going to be following up pretty soon where they need to be connecting to. All right, so let's go back to the actual other drawing. Now that I've actually gone and connected the points, these points that are not touching the picture plane to the stationary point, and forced those points to connect with the picture plane, I'm going, and I obviously have dropped these points, I'm going to now take this front view scenario and connect it to my vanishing point. Remember, this is the actual shape that is going to suddenly go back uh, and vanish or move towards the vanishing point. I'm going to go ahead, connect each one of these points to the vanishing point. All right, I could do that fourth one as well. But right now, I'm just going to stick with those. OK, quite clearly, you'll be able to see that there is a little bit of a shape happening over here. I've got intersecting points. This front point over here represents two points, an upper and a lower point. Remember, this is the top view over here, and this will be the front view. OK, so th if this one point represents two points, let's look at which they would represent. It would re represent this one and this one. From the top, these two points are directly in line with each other. Okay, so that point over there represents two points, and therefore this point also represents two points. So do the ones at the back. All right, so now I have to go connect this line over here to that point over there. This point, sorry, to that point, which means I've got this point that needs to be connected somewhere at the back. So let's follow this point over here that needs to be connected. There it goes to the picture plane and there it goes right down. I'm going to make a little mark over there for myself. All right, and let's follow this one. We know that this point is then connected to that point over there by this line. Therefore, this point here needs to be connected all along this line to another point, which is this back point here. And we're going to simply follow it and straight down. There it is there. Now remember I said that they had an upper and a lower point, so this was the upper point and this would be the lower point. There we go. I'm going to go make life a little bit easier. We're going to simply trim these around and I'm going to draw my final line from this point over here to there. I'm going to trim this away as well and trim the sky away. And my final product would look something like this. Now there's the box shape coming out quite clearly. Those were all created because they were, each one of these points were connected back to the vanishing point. Then I needed to find the depth which only this view could provide. I dropped it down to my picture plane by connecting it to my stationary point and then dropped it straight down to find these two points over here. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit clearer. Okay, so let's look at the difference between this drawing and the next drawing. Over here, I've already connected all the points in my auxiliary top view to my stationary point, which is me standing there looking at this box. I've also said that anything that touches the picture plane had to be dropped straight down. So those two points already touch the picture plane. I also recognize the fact that this point over here, this point, that point, and that point, each have a representation of two points, an upper and a lower point. I then had to go and connect each one of these two points that are not touching the picture plane to the stationary point to force two points on my picture plane. Once I found these two points, I projected them straight down. This, however, this front view over here, I don't have to go and connect to my vanishing point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so clearly you'll see that this looks way different to my previous one. You can see what the result, where the result is leading up to. Let's quickly switch across to the, the very first one. There it is there. This one leads up to the vanishing point at the top because my horizon line is a lot higher. And now I'm going to switch back. And this one leads a little bit further down because my vanishing point is now down. The concepts still stay the same. This front view will have to connect to the vanishing point. And this drawing, the actual front view also connected to the vanishing point. Do not get confused by the lines that cross this way and across that way. Okay, now I'm going to go follow on with point by point connections. This point is connected to this point over here. I had to bring it down to there and drop it straight down. This point over here is represented by these two points over here, the upper and the lower point. So let's go have a look at exactly where they intersect with each other. This point over here intersects with that point over a little further up. We might have to zoom in on this one over there and further down over there. There we go. So in that case over there, we will typically not see the back end of this shape because that point over there intersects with that point there, which is underneath this line here. It really falls in the back end. Uh, just remember that this point over here is represented by the upper and the lower point that is connected to my vanishing points. And I'd have to go and connect it up to this point over here, which if I follow it, is this one drop down straight over here that point and that point to my vanishing point will lead up to having the intersection point over there and over there. Okay, so let's go make this slightly clearer. I'm going to simply go take these two away, these two, just so that I can actually go ahead and draw what I need to. My final result if I zoom in on this guy over here, including the vanishing point, I'm going to change this line and that line and this line to be more final. And obviously, whatever is in the back will then be in hidden detail. Okay, without putting any hidden detail lines inside of there, I'm just going to leave it like that. And you'll see that there's a clear difference between this drawing and that drawing due to the vanishing point. I'm going to show you again. There's the clear difference. Okay, but please remember that the process stays the same. The front view connects to the vanishing point and the top view connects to the stationary point. In this drawing over here, the front view connects to the vanishing point and the top view connects to the stationary point. 
Right, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has made a lot more sense to you. Um, build on your understanding and if you have any comments, please comment on the videos and make sure that you guys do understand 100%. If you do not understand, please ask and we can uh, try and make a video to help you. Thank you very much.